So after making your images and animations in Keyshot, you render them out so you can publish them on various digital platforms. Now, depending on which platform you're uploading it to, it's going to have a different requirement of the relationship between the width and the height of your image. This is something called aspect ratio. And in this video, I'm going to explain how to change and set up the aspect ratio in Keyshot's real-time viewer, as well as for your final renders, saving you from the trouble of having to go into Photoshop or some other platform to crop and change that aspect ratio before you publish it elsewhere. If that sounds fun to you, stick around. All right, so here we are in Keyshot with a lovely train model I downloaded from the Keyshot Cloud Library. I put a ground plane in with a wood texture on it. I kind of tilted the camera, added some colored lights, and here we are at our scene. So let's talk about aspect ratios. When we say aspect ratio, we're referring to the width of the image compared to the height of an image. So if we were to say that this image is two times as wide as it is tall, it would be an aspect ratio of two to one. That first number in an aspect ratio has to do with the width, and then the second number has to do with the height. So when we move above Keyshot's ribbon and click on image, we'll see something called a resolution preset. Inside we see landscape, portrait, and custom options. And under landscape, which is the most common, you're going to see various resolution presets as well as some common print media uh, sizes and then some aspect ratio presets. These numbers at the bottom here are the aspect ratio. A one by one aspect ratio is going to be a square. It is going to be as wide as it is tall. If we go and try out some of these others like a five by four, you will see that the image is slightly wider than it is tall. And finally, if we go to a 16 by nine aspect ratio, you're going to see an image that is most familiar to widescreen displays today. So a 16 by nine is considered to be standard, and this is typically my default aspect ratio when rendering anything out that will be viewed on a TV or a computer screen these days. Now, you may have noticed that this image has now gotten smaller and is not taking up the entire screen here. Now, you may have noticed that my image no longer takes up the entire real-time view. This is just a little quirk within Keyshot, and as we kept adjusting the aspect ratio down, the image kept inheriting the width from the previous aspect ratio. So all we need to do to fix that is go up to the top bar in Keyshot's user interface and quickly drag it down and let go, and it will automatically fit to the width or the height, whichever the longest edge of your image is, and that will put you back into the full screen sort of mode. Now, when we go up into image again, looking under our resolution presets, if it wasn't obvious yet, landscape presets are going to be anything where the longest edge is the width of the image. When we go into our presets and check out the portrait aspect ratio, these are all going to be aspect ratios in which the long edge is the vertical dimension within your image. So you can think of that as like anytime you're going to get your picture taken, usually it's going to be in an image format where the height of the image is longer than the width. If we click on image again, you'll see underneath our resolution presets the option to lock our aspect ratio. What this does is it protects this height to width ratio. So if we were to change our Keyshot window, it's going to maintain the relationship between the height and width of this image, uh, regardless of how big or small we make our user interface. Now, if we go into choose lock resolution, this will actually allow us to change our Keyshot user interface, but it will not adaptively change our actual image it's going to preserve it. And if I was to scale this down, you'll see it won't go any smaller than the long edge that we had when we chose to lock that resolution. So if we want to go and change that, we just need to turn off lock resolution. And now we can go ahead and change our interface without issue. Now, one thing you might've noticed is there is this option under resolution presets for something called custom. And this is something that I didn't appreciate until fairly recently, but this is where you can actually add your own custom aspect ratios. 
So if I go to the second option I have here, which is two to one, which is similar to something called CinemaScope, it is what's considered kind of a, an ultra wide view. It is twice as wide as it is tall. While it's not the standard, um, I do think it's a little bit more pleasing than the 16 by nine sometimes. So I like having this quickly accessible in my presets. Another one that I have that's quite uh, common is the Instagram half portrait. So when I click on that, you'll see I get this aspect ratio that is the exact aspect ratio that's needed for Instagram posts uh, in the portrait orientation. So why would I have something that's called half portrait? Well, the reason being, you can see it says it's a 540 by 675 pixels. If I had the full resolution that Instagram suggests uh, you use for a portrait image, it would actually be too big to fit on my screen. That vertical dimension, if we go and look, is going to be 675 times two is 1350, I believe. And if I was to go and um, unlock the resolution, but make this as large as I can, if I hit my heads up display with H, you'll see the vertical dimensions is 1321. That means that 1350 pixels will not fit vertically on my personal display that I have here at home. So to make this easier to work with, I simply went ahead and created a preset that has just half the resolution. So it's half as wide and half as tall, meaning that it's still the same aspect ratio. And that way I can, you know, not worry about the actual resolution. I can just work as I see fit. And then when I go to actually render my final image, I can in my output here, change the resolution. So if I know that Instagram takes 1350 for its vertical resolution, I just type in 1350 and hit tab. And then now it's, you can see it ca uh, calculates the next dimension, which is the width uh, based on this height input. This is kind of the next thing that I wanted to um, call out, which is uh, when you're going to do your final rendering, Keyshot is going to take its marching orders from the currently active aspect ratio in your real-time view. So your real-time view should look like or have the aspect ratio that you need for your final rendering. What that means is you should not be working in say one by one or worse yet, some arbitrary aspect ratio, just whatever fits on your monitor and then go to render if you try then here to type in 1920 by 1080 for your standard, you know, uh, conventional landscape 16 by nine, you'll see that I can't actually do it. It says 1920, but now I can't put in uh, 1080 over here. If I type in 1080, it's going to switch this back to something weird. The reason is because the aspect ratio is always coming from the aspect ratio that's set in the real time view. So you always need to make sure that you are in the correct aspect ratio. So I'll go to uh, 16 by nine. And if this is rendering too slow here, I can always go and um, make it smaller like this. And then I can say lock resolution. So now in the real time view, it's resing up a little bit faster. The actual uh, size of this image does not matter in the real time view for my final output, because of my final output, I'm going to go into my resolution here and I'll type in 1920 and I'll hit tab and you'll see 1080 pops right in. There you go. You do see there are some presets here, which helps, but you shouldn't be setting your preset here at the end. Rather, you should be working in your aspect ratio from the start because that's going to change your, your, your framing and your um, composition of your image and everything you should be setting your aspect ratio when you're setting up your camera, in my opinion. So the last question you have is great. You showed me that we can do these cool custom aspect ratios. How do you set that up? Well, it's quite simple. In our image tab on the right here, you see that we have resolution here. If I go under presets, there's a drop down that says edit custom. I have no idea why they wouldn't have that over here, but it's hidden way over here on the right. And you go into edit custom, and this little guy pops up and you can see here that I've got one custom 
pixel dimension, which is my Instagram half portrait. And that's because again, when I looked up online, what Instagram suggests you use for the portrait post, 1080 by 1350. So I divided that by two, and I put it in for each of these two um, properties. Your aspect ratios are down here. And this is, if you don't know or care about the actual dimensions, you can set the, the, the aspect ratios. A lot of people who work in cinema and film are more familiar with aspect ratios. So it's easy to add an aspect ratio that's going to be supported by, say, your camera. And that way, if you're shooting back plates or something, you can um, match the, the aspect ratio of the frames that you'll be dragging in. Anyway, point being, you can create your custom uh, aspect ratio and your custom pixel dimension presets here, and you hit OK. And then when you go in your image under your custom presets, they'll be saved right here for you to use whenever you want. So I'm ready to render out my final image. I'm going to set up uh, my aspect ratio to make sure I get the one that I want. I'm going to go to my render settings and I'll make sure I set the longest. Uh, it doesn't matter. I can type in either the, the height or the width, whatever I want. In this case, I know I want this to be uh, 1080 for its uh, height and 2160 is calculated for the width. I will add this to my render queue and I am off to the races. Now, if you're fairly new to Keyshot, hopefully this saves you some frustration. I know when I started using Keyshot, the relationship between the real-time view here and the render output resolution was really confusing to me. And if you're a more experienced Keyshot user, hopefully the custom aspect ratio feature that I showed you is going to save you some time and improve your workflow. And last but not least, if you like this video, I encourage you to check out some of my other videos like this playlist here. This one on screen. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead and click that. All right. See ya.